crazy ass person is back. Woohoo! All right, guys. Anyway, guys. So today we're gonna be going over tools and little things. Okay, little things, basics. Oh, why I haven't posted in ten days is because I've been distracted with. Yeah, I three D designed it and printed it. I'm telling you guys, this is so fun to play with. Like I couldn't stop playing with it after I designed it, printed it. I played with this for hours, and then you could go like this. Oh shit! Hold on. This. I won't put this one. Hold on. Yeah. Ah, sick. Anyway, let's put that aside. Sorry, guys. <laughs> uh, next are LEDs. What are LEDs? Light emitting diodes. They emit light, basically. They, they. This is a breadboard. We found ourselves a 9 volt. Also, oh, what I just put here is a resistor, which I'll be using for the LEDs, right? This is a 330, or as we went over the last video. Wait, no, I didn't do a resistor yet. Shit. Well, I'll just put, bunch it up in this video. Anyway. This is beautiful, isn't it? Let's show you. All right, this is very easy to understand. So this is a resistor with four bands. This is a resistor with five bands. This is usually what you come across. So if you have a four band resistor, how it's gonna work is, is the first band you find Usually when you see a skinny band, that's the tolerance. That's how you know that's not the first band. And for the first band, it goes here. So band one is green and green is five. So you're going to write down five as shown here. Let's go a little closer. Then you have blue, which is in second band. And this is blue, which is six. So you're going to write six. And now, since it's a four band, you have two bands that are digits, one band that is a multiplier, and one band that is a tolerance, and it goes in order. Now, if you had five band code, it would be three digits, one multiplier, and one tolerance, which is right over here. <coughs> and basically, what you would do with the multiplier is five, six, and then the multiplier, which is yellow. So 56 times 10,000 is 560,000. You could also think of it as just doing a simple thing. Instead of multiplying it, you could just add as a digit, but you add four zeros. That's simple. See? Because a 10,000 has four zeros. And a 100,000 has five zeros. And you could just keep writing how many zeros. Like for this, you'd write zero zeros right it's a little bit confusing so yeah see zero zeros so yeah but it's better to think of it as a multiplier where you multiply by one multiply by ten multiply by hundred whatever and the tolerance is what it could tolerate up to or just co tolerate so the resistance will tolerate a certain amount so five percent of that resistance it could it could go up or down within that percentage so 560,000 okay times 0 0.05 or 5% right and it'll tolerate up to or go down 28,000 so what it'll do is depending on your multimeter how precise it is and not just the multimeter it's also the resistor it's just the tolerance of it will affect the measuring so you got five, six, zero, oh shoot, K, lowercase K, because it's ki um, kilo, which is a thousand. So 560 times a thousand, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Cool. Anyway, so this might be a little too bright. One more, come on. There you go. Cool. All right. So five hundred sixty thousand 
and it will go plus or minus two eight zero 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 or twenty eight thousand plus or minus now we get on to multimeters before we get onto this so you understand how this works for a resistor oh, let me just explain these things too so this is volts measuring voltage and dc okay so we're gonna start off from the top so my max for this multimeter is 600 volts dc direct current 440 and 4,000 milli, uh, millivolts, right? And what this means is, so like, let's say we have a nine volt right here, right? This might not be perfect nine, maybe, I don't know, right? Oh, also, if you do reverse the polarity on your leads, you will get a minus, as you see right here. And you don't need to worry about that. It's nothing bad. It's just the polarity is reversed on your measuring. <clears throat> So as you see here, when you measure, you get zero, seven. Okay. Now when I go down one more, you get seven point two. Now it's getting a little bit more accurate. Oh wait, we go to forty, and now we have seven point two one. So it just keeps pushing back, and the max. What this means is it'll display max of four thousand. So what you see here is the max. When we exceed this number, you'll see OL. It, my multimeter beeps because it's going over its voltage. So OL means overload, meaning it's too much for this setting. Now, if you go up here, we get a reading because it's not over 40. And that is why I like to start off with big because instead of uh, keep seeing overload, like let's say you're going on resistors, which is over here. That's the same thing for this, but it goes up to 400, 4,000, 40,000, 400,000, and 4 million. Is I like to start off big if I'm measuring a resistor. And then if I already know what it is, I'm just going to start off like one value above it. And then I measure it. So you see it reads 0 0.04, 0 0.03. You got to go down Whoops, to 4,000. And now we measure 33. Oh, wait, this is not 330. Whoops, sorry guys, that's black. I thought that was brown for a second. That's 33. Okay, 33 ohms. Okay, see? It, and now if you want more uh, accuracy, you go down to a lower one that could sustain it. So the most accurate one is 32.6 ohms. Okay, and that's where that tolerance kicks in. Since the tolerance is 5%, which is gold, it will fluctuate within, I think it's four? No, I think it will fluctuate within one or two uh, ohms. That's just 5% of 33, I'm not sure. So that's tolerance for you. All right, now some other things your multimeter have is NCV or non-contact voltage, which is basically uh, for my multimeter, this thing right here, is non-contact voltage so if you're measuring like a outlet or something you just put it up to that and it'll measure it from that it's not the best but it's good enough <clears throat> for not sticking your probes in there that's what it's for basically non-contact next we have is a diode which i'm pretty sure this is what i, I use a few times i've uh ch checked out diodes to see if they work or if they're like if their color is like straight off with that little line basically a diode only allows current to flow in one direction it won't flow it'll allow it to go back so if you have here let's see this let's see paper pencil it's gonna be your favorite friend best friend on that okay so, so it's similar so if we have a diode we have a di by the way when you see that line, that's uh, the positive side or the anode. So like this. Okay. And now remember a cell is like this. Now we have the short side is negative, right? 
So if this one is positive, this is negative, and you connect these guys like this, current won't flow because it's going negative against positive. Therefore, the field in here will expand outwards and prevent current flow. Now, if you switch these guys up where it's like this, now you have positive here, negative here. So positive and positive, negative, negative. Now we, we all know current flow, well, I mean electron flow goes from negative to positive. So what it will be doing is it's gonna be flowing through here. This little field over here, there's a field like this, right? And a diode, and what it will do. Well, one second, it's not like that. I'm not, I forgot what that's called. It's this is called forward biasing, right? When you're putting it in the right in a current, the right direction. So this field right here will contract into nothing, allowing current to pass through. Where it'll be nothing here and allowing electrons, little things, to flow through. Oops. Through. Okay, that's simplistically diodes for you. Now, if you reverse it, the field, which is, I mean, the, or, sorry guys, reverse bias, and you know, let me show you this. Uh, ver, uh, geez, what is this? Jeez, it's, jeez, it's my man. Quickly in a hurry. Okay, so basically that, this is representing this right here, all right? So if you have it like this, so positive, negative, so negative, positive, negative, positive, okay? <clears throat> If you reverse bias it, meaning this field right here that was here, waiting for electrons to show themselves, will expand all the way up here, preventing electron flow. Now, you understand diodes, we could get this out of the way, and that's what this diode does. Now, cooler thing, which is my favorite, it's a little Wi-Fi signal you might think, it's called continuity, Continua continuity. Continuity. Fuck, I can't pronounce that right. Basically, is if this black lead connects to this red lead and feels a connection, will it will beep? Okay, and uh, basically, it will uh, go through any conductive thing. So it sends out this little current through these two guys. Uh, as soon as the multimeter picks up the current. It will beep. So since this is metal and it's more likely conductive, you connect it here and it'll beep. Alright. Now, that's not always the case. When you have a resistor, that little current diminishes, preventing the multimeter from reading anything. So you won't hear anything. Sometimes you will. See, like this is a smaller resistor. You will hear something from that. But if I bring along my uh, 10K, there's too many of them, but basically I'll just connect them like this. 10K, you won't hear shit because it's too large of ohms preventing too much. It's resisting way too much of the current that this is feeding. So 33 will obviously I'll allow it because it's a low uh, resistance. So that will feel the current passing through but once you get up probably I'm pretty sure it's like a hundred or five hundred ohms it's gone no more no more beeping pretty sure it's a hundred now uh, inductors are way too advanced for beginners well it's not way too advanced but I'd like to get, do these guys a little bit later not this video next video more likely now, what we'll be doing, oh yeah, also, this, these guys are just battery testers, this is what my weird multimeter has, just to test a 9 volt, so if you have a 9 volt,
six point. Six three, right? And NCV, like I talked about, non-contact voltage measures this EF. I forget what that means, uh, but basically, put it up and kind of tells you it beeps if it's high voltage also i would like to show you guys besides this diode thing and the resistor thing so as you guys remember hopefully from uh the first video we went over ohm's law now we're going over a few more little formulas you might want to remember or use and uh, so this just doesn't apply just to LEDs, but it's commonly used for LEDs. But this also works for IC chips and uh, circuits in general. Like, so what this formula is used for, I'm not really sure what it's called. I just remember it. <clears throat> so it's R, whoa, okay, well, too bright again. Beautiful. R equals voltage source minus voltage now this is usually called led voltage led right divided by current of led so it's i l e d <clears throat> now what this formula does it finds you the right resistor for the current of what your led takes so let's say this LED takes, um, we're just going to go with, so you see this guy has different, these guys have different voltages, that's just my LED, and it's every LED, but these guys are very, yeah, <clears throat> there's nothing else I was to say, so this is 3 volts to 3.2 volts, right, so we have, we're just going to say our voltage source, we have a 9 volt, and we're gonna say it's actually pure nine volts. Actually, no, we're gonna use this guy and we're gonna say this is, what was this? Seven volts, I think it showed. Oh, wait, no, it showed 6.63, but we're just gonna go with the seven that we measured. Okay, so now we're gonna do voltage source, which is six volts. Oh, shit, my bad, seven volts <laughs> minus our voltage LED. Our voltage LED, we're just going to say 3 volts, okay? 3 volts. You don't need to write these. I'm just showing you guys what this is. You don't you don't write the symbols, actually, but I'm just making it easier for you to understand. So this guy is this. This guy is this. Okay? Now you do division. The resistor is what you're uh, looking for, right? And now I LED, I'm pretty sure the current for these LEDs is 0 0.013. So we're going to say 0 0.013, or it could be written as 13 milliamps, but this is easier for calculation purposes. So we're going to bring our long all calcul calculator. Mm -hmm. So 7 minus 3 is 4. I'm going to bring that up down to here. R equals 4 divided by 0 0.013 divided by 0 0.013. And that is 307 ohms. You can round it to 308. So for most resistors, we usually have 300. You could just put them in series and add them all up. So if you have like a 5 ohm and, or 7 ohm, it's not too common but usually if you have 307 you've rounded up so you would have 310 so 310 ohms so you could put a 300 resistor in series with 10 resistor which would look like this i'm just doing this fast mm. 
and this would equal out to 310 ohms plus or minus the tolerance right now what would happen here is, with this guy is it would give it exactly the amount of current needed I'm not saying this is exactly co correct, but I remember you, uh, messing around with the power supply and giving it a certain amount of amps. Pretty sure it was 0.013 that gave it precisely enough to power it on at 3 volts. And uh, yeah, so for this guy, 310 ohms or 307 ohms will fulfill exactly what it needs. So if you have a circuit, let's just say uh, it's a six volt. So I'm just gonna I'm just gonna write this as people usually write this. So it's a plus minus it's a six volt. Usually this is what it says, just a supply, right? But when you're drawing a battery, usually you put this. So probably should have put the battery symbol since yeah it's not exactly nine volts so we're gonna put it so we're gonna say we have exactly a 307 ohms because we calculated 307 rounded right and uh we're gonna say oh yeah this is a series circuit by the way so one path and we're going to put our resistor right here and our LED right here. Now remember an LED is a diode with a circle and two arrows pointing out See, like that because it's emitting light and this resistor is 307 ohms. Highly unlikely there's a resistor like that, precisely exactly like that, but who knows? If you're working for NASA, you probably have, they probably have custom uh, resistors, but not for uh, regular purposes. <coughs> so, 307. Now the six volts will uh, still be six volts, but it will give it exactly when you put it and measure it it won't be six volts because on it has a voltage drop and it will measure three volts on this LED and uh, the current will be this so now I don't think I have a 307 ohm resistor because I am not a crazy person but I can scavenge for a resistor like that I can't find my resistor kit but I found a 1000 ohm resistor and you know what that means if you have three of them in parallel they'll div basically divide each other in three equal paths meaning if we twist twist this up do 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 this up it means we'll read 430 ohms close enough now to prove I'm saying what I'm saying is this look at that crazy huh no since they're equal, that's how it works. But if they're different, it works way differently. And I'll show you the calculation later. Okay, so we have a 330. Where's my breadboard? Oh, breadboards. I'm just gonna write on this one just for educational purposes. We're gonna use Sharpie. That one. Oh, yeah, I'll just do this one. 
And how this works is this guy, all of these guys work like this. So all of this little horizontal line are all connected together. So I would be careful with that. And it goes on like this. It goes on strips. And this one right here goes vertically all the way down. Minus is on the left side and plus is on the right. And for here, it's the same thing. But why just explain it? Why not show it? You're right. Look at this. Cool, huh? Now, to understand how this breadboard works, I will be doing this. Watch and learn. I'll connect this one anywhere I want because I'm crazy. Just kidding. And I'll connect this one right here. Now we're going to say plus and minus. So now what we've done is we've connected these two together right here. Okay. So now resistor, this resistor right here. This uh, terminal, or what do we call it, the wire is connected to the positive or the anode of the LED. Now, you see how negative or the cathode is left alone and this other side of the resistor is left alone. That's where our battery would go. And I have a battery snap right over in my bag. Now... Oh no, look at that. They have no wires going out. Just the perfect part of your favorite second, well, one of your favorite tools, the wire stripper. Craziest invention on earth. Now I got my comb bolt, but basically there's other better ones like there because this one is a little bit, this one's very good though, I'm not gonna lie. But they could have improved a little bit on the sharpness. Still sharp, but not too good. Not to the best. And this one is in the 0.8 of a millimeter. So we're going to do this. Now we have an excess thing. We'll throw that in the garbage. And we can do this too. And cool. Now we have the insulation stripped away, hence wire strippers. We're just gonna twist these guys up so all the little strands of wire don't split. And what we're gonna do is now put negative on the cathode because the cathode is negative on the LED right here. And for this one, we'll put this right here Okay, now positive will flow or in conventional flow, it's going to go from here, through here, through the LED, emit light, and will continue through here. But in actual electron flow, it'll go through, the, well, it'll go through the battery pack anyway, through the conventional flow, just go positive to negative, and electron flow will go from the battery, negative, light positive through the resistor and here you go you'll end up here now it doesn't matter however you put this you could switch these guys up you could put led first put a positive and it'll still work the same way and make sure when you before you plug in the power your wiring are correct i am cocky and i didn't check my powering so we'll see wow. Whoa. We got our voltage or DMM, digital multimeter, and we'll measure the LED. Now it won't be exactly three volts because it's a 330 resistor. Oh, I'm on ohms, whoops. But that'll be pretty close, 2.8 ticks, look at that. And for the resistor, the voltage drop is 3.6, 3.6 plus 2.8 is about 7.4 no wait hold on what did I say 2.8 plus 3.6 my bad that's 6.4 6 
And when we measure all across both of these guys, the LED and the resistor, we get 6.5. I'm off the screen. Whoops. Resistance total equals R1 times R2 divided by R1 plus R2. Now, what we're going to do is show you exactly how this works. This bad boy works. So we've got one case, right? These guys are the same thing. So we already know if you have the same thing, they basically split each other depending on how many paths they have or how many resistors there are. Paths. Mm -hmm. okay. But if you have different values, let's just say that. So this would be 500 since it's 1K divided by 2. It would be 500 ohms. But let's say we have a 1K and we have ourselves a 10k now to calculate the resistors if you put these guys in parallel like this we'll figure it out now I have a suspicion a suspicion i already know what the value is but i'm pretty sure i'm wrong uh, is, uh, yeah get my calculator because i'm needing you soon buddy so R1, which is, we'll just call it 1K, this is 10K, okay. So, yeah, we have the value, whoa, okay, that was weird. And then we have 1K, 10K. So what we're gonna do is 1,000 times 10,000 is, uh, Six, we have, there you go, 10 million seconds. I, get, I can't talk when I'm doing math. I don't know. It's just a weird thing. We're going to put our total right here. Total. Okay. Awesome. And we'll do this R1 plus R2. Liberty K. This could have been written as 10M. 10m as in mega mega is one million you could also think of that million million okay and we're gonna also set up our we're just i mean multimeter so we're gonna measure it afterwards so first calculator so we have 10 million okay divided by eleven thousand. oh shit okay it's 909 Okay, 909, 109, uh, ohms, it's horrible, it's ohm symbol, 909, these are bad nines too. Okay, 909, and 909, so we're going to be going on 4,000 cents, 400, 900 is exceeding that. And if we put these guys together, boys and girls, we're going to get 909 or something close to that. We're just like twisty twisty. Okay. And voila, guys. 909. 904. Oh, tap it again. Never mind. Anyway, 909, 905, 905 we measured. Cool, huh? Crazy. Anyway, now you understand resistors. You understand a multimeter. Current flow or, uh, uh, yeah, current flow, conventional flow, and LEDs. You also understand these two formulas. They are very vital when you're working with circuits. This one again, which is R equals V S minus V L E D or V anything that you are looking to uh for the resistor to do the job, right? So we're gonna say V L E D divided by I L E D. 
And the next formula is right here, we just learned, is R equals R1 plus R2, I mean, sorry, R total equals R1 times R2 divided by R1 plus R2. Certified Hood Classic. This is a Certified Hood Classic.